In this video, we will look at how to provide a context-free grammar for the language L. It's the set of strings W from the alphabet 0, 1, such that W contains at least three ones. So first, let's think about strings that should be in uh, the language. So W is an L versus strings um, that are not in the language. <coughs> so for strings that should be in the language, our shortest string is just three ones. That's the smallest string that can be in the language. Um, we could tack on a zero before the first one and the string would be in the language. We could have a zero before the first one and a zero before the second one and the string would be in the language. I could have a one and then two zeros and then a one and then I could have my third one and any number of zeros. I could have them completely spaced out. Um, and additionally I could have more than three ones. So I could have this string and then any number of ones after that. So some strings that are not in the language, um, having just one one will not be in the language. Having two ones, having some number of zeros and uh, only two ones. Okay. So this list isn't very interesting, um, as long as we don't create three ones, then the string won't be in the language. So the thing that we want to notice is that order doesn't matter. And by that I mean um, there is no real structure to the order of placements of zeros and ones in this string. As long as we have three ones present, it's going to be in the language. So we don't have to worry about order, um, but we do need to be careful if we try creating a grammar that will um, generate the ones separately or one at a time. So if we try to do that, if we took that route, um, we would need to be careful that we our grammar knows when we built three ones, um, which means we have to have some idea of what has been generated before. And this can probably be done, um, but it would probably require a lot of rules and entering only certain rules after past rules have been created. So instead of doing that, um, we're going to try a method where we're going to make all three ones at the same time. And then we're going to use rules that add additional, um, possibly additional ones or zeros. In the case of our string 111, we don't need to add anything else. Um, so what does it look like um, when we create all three ones at the same time? Well, if you think about it, any one of these strings that's in the language has a structure that looks like this. Okay, somewhere in the string it has the structure. Um, and notice I've left gaps. That's because this uh, can be really anything. Let's call that W1. And this can be anything. Let's call that W2. This can be anything, W3. And this can be anything, W4. Okay, so in these cases, um, W1, W2, W3, and W4 are elements of a uh, sigma star or zero, one star. So each of these um, could be epsilon. They could be the empty string. In fact, when all of those are the empty string, we get the string 111. Um, but alternately, they could be something else. So if we look at this example here, W1 is a zero, W2, W3, and W4 are epsilon. If we look at this example, W1 and W2 are zeros, W3 and W4 are epsilon. Um, and if we look at this example, there's actually a number of ways to break up the string, um, but probably the easiest way to see it we can think of W1 being 0, W2 is 0, W3 is 0, 
and W4 is 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so we can confirm here that all of our strings in the language conform to this structure, whereas all of the strings that are not in the language do not have this structure, specifically because they're lacking at least um, one of these ones and maybe, maybe two or three of these ones. So, um, how can we have a rule that generates this structure? Well, let's start with our start variable. And it's going to generate some variable r and then a 1, and then r again and then a 1, r again and then a 1, and then r again. Okay, so here is our, um, so in this case, r is going to generate w1, w2, w3, and w4. Okay, that's what we're going to try to do. So what does that mean r has to be? Um, and to avoid confusion, even though I'm trying to make my ones look like ones and not ors, I'm going to write each rule on a separate line. Um, they could be on the same line with an or, but I'm just going to make it really clear here. So um, r could be just a single zero. That's one thing r could be. Um, right now with our grammar, that would generate only the string 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, but that string is in the language, so that's an okay rule. R could also generate a 1. Okay, so now with these two rules, um, I could have a bunch of different kinds of strings. I could have, say, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, or, you know, flip any of those zeros to 1s. Um, but that's not very exciting. Right now, that's only giving us strings of length, uh, what, 2, 4, 7. Um, so we want R to be able to generate um, any number of zeros and ones. Um, that's how we're going to end up having R create this W1, W2, W3, W4, any of those. Okay, so we need R to be recursive. Okay, what this rule means is um, if I replace an R in my derivation with this rule, R goes to zero, R, I'm going to add a zero and then go back to R again. So now I could add as many zeros as I want and then end that rule with either a zero or a one. So I also want the rule, okay, so now I really can generate um, any number of zeros or ones from each of these R's. So each of these R's in the original and the first rule here coming from the start symbol is going to allow me to create um, any arbitrary string. Um, oh, we're missing a rule. What rule are we missing? Right? We have to have it be the case that those substrings um, that are generated by R could also be empty. So in fact, um, we can shortcut this. Given our last rule, we can get rid of these two rules. Why is that? Let's look at um, let's look at a sample derivation. So let's say I want to create a simple string 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so I'm going to apply my rules in order. I've got S goes to R1, 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 R. Okay, actually this should be creating. Okay. Um, and then um, this can yield. Let's replace that first R with the rule R goes to 0, R. We have 0, R, 1, R, 1, R. R. And now all I need to do is start um, replacing these R's with epsilon. So I'm going to jump a little bit. I'm going to say that we replace them um, in leftmost order, but I'm going to replace every one of these R's with the rule R goes to epsilon. So I'm going to end up with this string. Okay. So see how the use of this last rule means that I don't have to worry about replacing an R with a zero 
because I can use the rule r goes to 0 r and then the rule r goes to epsilon to do that. Okay, so let's take another example string that should be in the language. Um, let's take 1001100. Zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Okay, so we want to create this string 1001100. One, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Is that what I have? Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so s yields r1, 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 r. Um, and then we have nothing appearing before this first one. So we're going to use the rule r goes to epsilon to give us, I'm trying to make these look as much like ones as possible, 1, r, 1, r, 1, r. Okay, and now I need to end up with um, two zeros with this first r. That r needs to generate those two zeros. So first, let's use the rule 0, r, 1, r, 1, r. Now notice here that my choice to eliminate the rule r goes to zero in the grammar, to simplify the grammar, actually makes um, the derivation just a little bit longer. If I still had that rule, so the rule I'm talking about is this one that I got rid of, because I said we don't need it. We don't need it. Um, but if I had that rule, then I could replace this r that's next to the zero with a zero. I, I got rid of that rule to make the grammar a little shorter, but it's going to make this derivation just a little longer. So I need to generate the second zero. That one comes with an r. 1 r, 1 r. Okay, and now I can apply the rule r goes to epsilon for this um, first r that's appearing in the current string. Okay, now notice um, in the string we're trying to generate, there's no, um, there are no substrings, I guess you could say, between the two ones that are next to each other. So this r here can just um, use the rule r um, is replaced by epsilon. So I end up with this. And then last, this r needs to create those um, two zeros at the end. So we're going to do similar to what we did before. Zero, zero, one, one. Uh, I think my rule is zero r. And then I need to use that rule one more time. Oops, that's wrong. So try to, let me just fix that. Okay, one, one, zero, zero, r. Okay, and then last, I'm going to replace that final r with epsilon. Okay, and so now we have that s yields one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Um, using some number of rules from the grammar, some number of steps in the derivation. So um, we have the grammar generates the string that should be in the language. So that worked.